In this video, we shall discuss the Lorentz contraction effect in special relativity, where the length of a uniformly moving object appears shorter compared to its rest frame length. Now the textbook approach is to apply the Lorentz transformation equations, but this is physics textbook, not a textbook. So we don't want to apply equations blindly to demonstrate the length contraction effect. We rather want to understand why it actually happens. Welcome to physics textbook. We shall explain the length contraction phenomena and of course obtain the length contraction equation by looking into the process of length measurement done by two groups of observers in different inertial frames. So two inertial frames. One is R frame S0. You, me and the others watching this video are the observers in this frame. We are analyzing this. Naturally, the space-time diagram we shall use are drawn from our perspective. Let's take a stick at rest in R frame S0. Our job here is to measure its length. Obviously, S0 is the rest frame of the stick. Then there are observers moving uniformly with speed v relative to R frame S0. So from their frame, say S1, also inertial, this stick appears to be moving with the same relative speed v but in the opposite direction. Both inertial frames will have space-time coordinate systems of their own and the observers in these two frames will measure the length of the stick using their respective coordinates. So the first question we should ask is what is the definition of length of an object? Sure, we all intuitively understand what length is but in relativity whenever you take this oh this is obvious attitude you run into trouble. So we better be thorough. The length of an extended object in relativity is defined using the space-time interval between the two endpoints of that object when they are being observed simultaneously. This criteria of simultaneity makes the time part of the space-time interval vanish and we are left with a spatial segment only, giving what is intuitively understood as the physical length of that object, that is the difference of the space coordinates of the two endpoints of that stick, or its square at any rate, because the definition is in terms of the space-time interval delta s squared. Also, the definition of delta s squared we use has the space part with a negative sign in front, so the equation defining length squared should be minus of delta s squared. For convenience, we shall use length squared instead of length so that we don't have to carry the ugly square root throughout the video. Ok, now we use the definition we just discussed to measure the length of our stick and depict the length measurement process carried out by the S0 and S1 frame observers in a space-time diagram that we, the observers in frame S0, draw. Remember that S0 happens to be the rest frame of the stick, so we see the stick at rest at all times. But where on our diagram should the stick be? It should be lying along the direction of our space axis. Why? Because when observers in any inertial frame look at the stick, they are observing all parts of the stick simultaneously, right? So the stick appears parallel to their line of simultaneity, which is nothing but their respective space axis. Think about it. Everything you see around you right now, all of it must be along the spatial direction of your frame, right? Otherwise, how are you seeing it as a whole in this instant? Also, since our S0 frame clock keeps ticking, for the stick and for us, all must keep moving in the time direction. So, the two endpoints, in fact all parts of the stick, will have vertically upward world lines in our space-time diagram as the static observers like ourselves in S0 do. Coming back to the length measurement, when we observe, say at time instant T1, the two endpoints are events A and B with coordinates ct1 and x1 and ct1 and x2 respectively. The length we get is therefore x2 minus x1 whole square which equals to let's say l0 square. This is the rest length also called the proper length of the stick. Now what about the length measurement in the moving from s1? In our space time diagram the x prime and ct prime axis of s1 frame appear tilted at an angle tan inverse of vyc with respect to our x and ct axis respectively, since the relative speed between s0 and s1 is v. Also, its observers appear to move parallel to the ct prime axis. Why? You should know why if you have watched my earlier videos, so do watch them. <laughs> anyway, as we explained earlier, these moving observers also see all parts of the stick simultaneously at every instant. So the stick must appear along their space axis as well but of course in a state of uniform motion in the opposite direction. Notice how the stick appears to move along the space axis of S1 frame but is static with respect to the space axis of S0 frame. 
Coming back to the business of length measurement by S1 from observers, they also measure the space-time coordinates of the two endpoints of the stick simultaneously. So for them, the two endpoints of the stick at their moment of measurement, say at their clock reading T1 prime, are where the CT prime equal to CT1 prime line intersects the world lines of these two endpoints. In the diagram, these are denoted by events A prime and B prime with coordinate readings CT1 prime X1 prime and CT1 prime X2 prime respectively. So the length of the stick according to the S1 frame guys is X2 prime minus X1 prime whole square which has let's say value L1 square. We need to find how this L1 compares to our measure length L0 that will get us to the length contraction formula. To do this with minimum effort, we can use our liberty to choose when to take the length measurement in S0. That is, we choose T1 such that events A and A prime coincide. So that measuring coordinates of one side of the stick, that is one end of the stick by S0 and S1 frame observers is a single event. Just refer to it as event A, whose coordinate reading in S0 is CT1 X1 and in S1 is CT1 prime X1 prime. However, this won't make the corresponding measurement events of the other end of the stick in the two frames, that is event B and B prime coincident. This is the crux of the length contraction phenomena. Since the sense of simultaneity is frame dependent, when the measurement events of one end of the stick in the two frames coincide, those of the other end of the stick won't. In a zero frame, we see event B is simultaneous to event A and the stick is along our x-axis, whereas in frame S1, the other group of observers see the event B prime is simultaneous to event A and the stick is parallel to their x prime axis. So essentially, to measure length of the same stick, the two groups are measuring space-time intervals between different pairs of events and thus they end up getting different results. Now, how to connect the two length measurements? We need to express the delta S A B prime using our S0 frame coordinates. That will help us relate L0 and L1. You can see that delta S A B prime, which is a purely special length in S1 frame, appears to be made of a special part and a temporal part according to our S0 frame coordinate system. From the diagram, the space part is clearly x2 minus x1 squared or in other words, L0 squared itself. To write the time part, we need the time coordinate of B prime in S0 frame. If it is some CT2, delta S AB prime squared will be C squared into T2 minus T1 squared plus X2 minus X1 squared, a sum of time part and space part in terms of S0 frame coordinates. In fact, we can express the time part in terms of space part that is L0 squared using simple trigonometry. Since the lines AB and AB prime are parallel to the space axis of S0 and S1 frame respectively, the angle between the two is tan inverse of V by C. This we have explained earlier. Referring to the right angle triangle ABB prime with base length X2 minus X1 or L0 and base angle theta which is just tan inverse of V by C, we have the height divided by the base that is C T2 minus T1 divided by X2 minus X1 equals tan theta or V by C. Thus, the temporal part is V by C times X2 minus X1 or V by C times L0. This helps us write the entire delta S A B prime squared in terms of L0 squared. Taking L0 squared common and square rooting the equation, we arrive at the length contraction formula which shows that the length L1 measured by the S1 frame observer is shorter than the rest length L0 by the inverse of the Lorentz factor gamma which is always a fraction. Another way to put it is moving object's length appears shorter than its actual or proper length which can only be measured by observers at rest with respect to that object. So we are done. Let me know what you think of our way of demonstrating the Lorentz contraction effect. I hope you have found it insightful. Have fun with our space-time diagram approach of doing relativity from the playlist on the right. Thanks for your time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.